The original inspiration for this project was to basically make some manual controls for a, a CNC lathe and milling machine that I have. It's a small machine, a, a Sherline mill and Sherline lathe. And uh, basically I wanted to be able to control the hand wheels via these rotary encoders. And the reason for this is the machines are pretty lightweight. They're not big heavy machines that are hard to move the components in ways that introduce errors into the machining process. One thing I noticed when running them in a CNC mode, the uh, results were much better than if I was doing it manually. And what I found happens is as I'm turning the hand wheels, basically the forces um, from going from rotating the hand wheel would be uh, propagated throughout the machine itself and I'd be able to see these little forces like basically moving it back and forth like this into the metal itself. So basically they're good machines. If you live in an apartment they're excellent. They're not like a huge bridge port or a huge South Bend lathe for example. So I basically wanted to control the stepper motors via these rotary encoders because I do enjoy manual machining. Um, I think for fast prototyping it's uh, quicker than writing G-code or um, using some program to uh, prototype your part. If you just want to make the part as quickly as possible, doing it manually seems uh, to be the best option for me. Um, but in this process I've learned that there's still a lot that I need to understand about stepper motors and control systems. Uh, so this is the current state. Basically I got these rotary encoders. Uh, you can go online and uh, check them out for yourself. They are a little expensive and I thought in the future a good machining project would be to basically uh, make these because uh, I've bought in the uh, infrared um, photo transistors and uh, LEDs uh, for these so that that would be fun but basically you have um, two signals that you have to worry about and these signals the phases are offset by about 90 degrees and by that you can tell which way it's spinning um, by looking at the shifts there's lots of tutorials online on how to do this and uh, for these for the Arduino somebody did a excellent tutorial with a uh, source code on it that basically utilizes the interrupts of these Arduinos because if you uh, pull for it in the main loop it's basically not going to be fast enough so basically the uh, digital pins two and three will trigger an interrupt whenever the uh, A or B uh, signals occur. Uh, here's another example of a motor uh, or rotary encoder that you can get uh, online and there's instructions for these also. Um, this one only has two signal wires. Um, I'm not 100% sure what this uh, out Z is for. I believe this is a sync line so basically it gets triggered only once per rotation. Um, but I figured out what the uh, wires are by looking online here so basically red is positive uh, black is ground and then white is A and uh, green is B that may be reversed uh, don't don't take my word on that so looking at these Arduino Pro minis these are the 3.3 version one thing that I've noticed is uh, if you compile your code in the Arduino IDE for 5 volts at 16 megahertz and upload it. Uh, if you try to connect uh, using the serial monitor or connect to the serial port, it's not going to work because the clock is running at a different frequency. This really frustrated me for a long time until I finally found a form online where some people were discussing this. So if I upload these at uh, 3.8 volts and then I set the serial bald rate to 9600 and then I open up my terminal program with 9600 bald everything works correctly. Uh, I have a hunch these aren't the uh, real deal Arduinos they're probably a cheap knockoff um, but what I did here for the I squared C pins uh, A4 and A5 apparently this chip here dedicates the I squared C 
subset them to these pins so you can't assign them to a different pin. So basically I soldered in these pin headers, bent them over, and then soldered them in like that so that I have easy access to um, those pins. Uh, one trick I learned from uh, Brainy Bits um, is you can upload the exact same code to an Arduino and have it behave differently. So I have these dip switches here which are connected directly over to the uh, digital pins 6 through 9 on the Arduino. And these IDs can be used for defining a specific behavior of the program or simply being an ID. Um, for example, right now this one is set to zero and this one is set for one, to one. So basically, both of these share the same I squared C bus and they're connected to different rotary encoders. Now, I am curious if I can have multiple rotary encoders on one Arduino, uh, how that would work. I'm not sure how many interrupt pins these things have. What happens if two interrupts happen at the same time? My guess is that it's safest to have um, separate Arduinos per rotary encoder. <clears throat> so basically I can uh, take these rotary encoders here Oh yeah, one thing, you can see these uh, pull-up resistors here, so these uh, pull the, uh, the signals up. This brand of rotary encoder here requires pull-up resistors on the outputs in order to work, while this one doesn't. Um, so the orientation here is positive goes down, so I'll just put that in there, and then tighten down these screws. can connect the other rotary encoder the same way. Let's see, I believe brown is positive. I don't understand why they chose that color. Yeah, positive. 5 volts to 12 volts is what it takes. Okay, and then uh, another thing I made is this uh, I squared C bus header here that supplies power. Um, a little switch here to turn the power on and off. In hindsight, I should have made a another um, rail for reset. I think that would make things easier. Um, but on this wire, it looks like green is positive. So bringing our uh, stepper motor controller over here. I'm going to put positive into there and I just heard it power up and then I don't remember what is positive on this one. Let's see. Looks like it's the one to the right. Okay, I'm going to reset everything. Yeah, so basically I'm slowly turning this and it's uh, turning the stepper motor. And these rotary encoders here have a lot of little ticks in them. Not sure if you can hear the stepper motor whining there. Okay, looks like we could use another one. So I'm going to put one in here. You can hear it sparking. That's probably not the best for it. Let me redo everything so you can get a view. Okay, that's a little bit better. Here we have a bigger stepper motor.
So we have two stepper motors on the uh, zero and one channel. And remember the dip switches in here are set to zero and one. So now this other one can control that one and this one can control this one. And they can be controlled both at the same time. One thing that's cool, like if I spin this like three times, it takes a while to catch up, but if I spin it back three times, even though it hasn't gotten to that end position, it's basically keeping track of its current position. So if I spin it three times, but it doesn't get there, and then I spin the rotary encoder back three times, it can stop to where it's supposed to be. This should give you an idea of just how sensitive this thing is. Uh, right here we have the um, rotary encoder board and I made this uh, enclosure for it basically out of wood I believe this is pine I had uh, two thin pieces of pine I glued them together then used the uh, milling machine and to cut out the insides put in these uh, notches here for the wires and then I used the router to put the curves on it uh, I sanded it okay, could have done a better job, and I don't have any stains, so I just used motor oil, which it smells kind of funky right now, but whatever. Uh, there was some chipping here, I was basically impatient, I didn't let the glue dry, so I think that's what basically caused that to break away there. Um, I need to get some uh, small wooden screws to mount this in here. I'll use the lathe to make some small spacers to uh, offset this a little bit. So, have to get the orientation right here. Let's see here, what is what? Uh, okay, positives down here. This rotary encoder requires the pull-up resistors. I found that the uh, OLED display driver board uh, uses too much of the I squared C bandwidth. So it's going to be communicated with from now on using a serial cable. So I made this here. Uh, you can see that the RX and TX pins are reversed. Ah, that pin got bent there. Let's see here, I forget. I think brown's positive. Yeah, brown is positive. Probably should make these uh, stronger here. I could use hot glue and uh, heat shrink tubing. Okay, so have to keep in count uh, which one's TX and which one's RX. <laughs> Looks like it uh, goes this way. Ah, forgot to feed the wires through there.
Oh. This might be a little challenging. Probably should have designed this differently. design this I think probably just slot that out nice now it's in a box <laughs> 